I've always been healthy. I've always been driven. I can remember as far back as when I was in high school, I was an athlete growing up. It just made me realize that that was my mission. That was my calling. Leading up to my AFib diagnosis, I just felt like I couldn't do the things I enjoyed to do most in life, and that included running, cycling, being active. Anytime I did anything, I felt like my heart was ready to explode, and I was sprinting when I was walking. AFib really held me back from being who I really wanted to be. And my family was affected by AFib because at some point I wasn't myself. Atrial fibrillation really affected my relationship with my wife. Several months before Eddie was actually diagnosed with AFib, I noticed that something was going on with him emotionally. He just wasn't the same person. He got angry. He was frustrated. He would snap. And it's just not in his personality to do that. And I thought, What's wrong? Anybody that knows Eddie knows he motivates other people to get up. He's full of energy. He just wants to go, go, go. So it's really hard to see somebody like that. And it was hard for our community at Cut Fitness as well to see their coach, this guy that has spent so much time and so many years motivating them to get up and move their body that couldn't move his own body. It took about six months for me to realize I had something wrong and it took about two months to go see a doctor, and it took a doctor about 10 seconds after the EKG to determine that I had AFib. <laughs> when it came to medication as an athlete, it really was hard for me to accept what the doctor said, and that was to take a heart medication. Some of the side effects I experienced with the medication were very low energy, unclear thoughts and not really any desire to do anything. It really worked against my philosophy of life. When I met Dr. Natali, I had this feeling over me like he was my guardian angel. I learned that the electrophysiologist is a specialist who can determine how we're gonna approach this problem. When he explained to me what he was going to do, it made complete sense that a radio frequency ablation was the most effective. I felt like I found the right guy that's gonna help me, and he did. Eddie is very active, physically active, actually is a gym. He could not do that anymore with the AFib, uh, both because of the atrial fibrillation and partially because of some of the side effects from medication. So once you, you sort of fail your sort of safer antiarrhythmic drugs, which he did, at that point, you need ablation become a, a, a better option. As a doctor, the most rewarding things to see that you are able to restore uh, normal life into a patient that uh, uh, did not enjoy that for a while. His recovery was pretty quick. He told me that he was you know, back exercising the way he used to, that he was feeling well, and he actually asked me, can I bike again? And I said, yes. So he was, he was happy about uh, all of that. And he was happy where he was with his energy level and the fact that he was back to the gym the way he used to do before uh, without any problem. It's important that people realize that uh, if AFib is affecting your life, try to consider ablation sooner. There is no point to endure years and years and years of suffering. Since having the ablation, my outlook in life has changed completely. I don't take life for granted. I slow down, smell the roses. I appreciate the quality time I spend with my family and friends. To all the patients out there dealing with AFib, my biggest advice is never to give up. Don't stop at the first ablation. Don't stop at the second ablation. Only stop when you're cured.